Hello, I am Lindsay Oro, Physician Assistant at Virginia Spine Institute. And today on this World Obesity Day, I am joined by experts in their respective medical fields. We have bariatric surgeon, Dr. Amanda Peicher of Surgical Consultants of North Virginia, as well as spine surgeon and director of research, Dr. Colin Haynes of Virginia Spine Institute. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you for having us. Oh, good. Yeah, we're so excited. You know, this is an important day because, you know, as a nation, I think this is something we really need to focus on. And we're going to be discussing many topics around this. And, you know, I think it's very fitting because over this past year, you know, with the pandemic, we have heard that Americans are gaining what we're terming the COVID-19, so 19 pounds associated with you know, the inactivity of the pandemic, um, working from home, homeschooling your children, the, all the lockdown restrictions, I mean, all of that together really has led to weight loss or weight gain throughout this pandemic. And they're estimating 71 million Americans have gained weight over this past year. And so we find ourselves um, with this extra weight having more issues associated with that, like back pain. And so, you know, Dr. Peicher, if you could just start us off at the very beginning with BMI, you know, that's a popular term, body mass index. You know, what does that mean and why is it so important for us to understand what our BMI is and, you know, where we fall within that chart? Sure. So that's a great starting point. So um, body mass index, or what's known as BMI, is a measure of total body fat, and it helps us standardize um, total body fat in people that are different heights. So it looks at your weight in kilograms over your height in meters squared and comes up with a number. And then once we have that number, we can put you into different groups where we know um, what your risk is associated with that BMI. So, for example, a normal weight is a body mass index of about 20 to 25. Class 1 obesity is a body mass index of 30 to 35. Class 2 obesity is 35 to 40. And then what's known as morbidly or extreme obesity is a body mass index of 40 or above. Body mass index does have its limitations, of course. Um, it's really only um, accurately used in adult patients, so not really appropriate for adolescents, but it is the best tool we have at this point to help us standardize body fat in patients. That makes sense. You know, having to account for height makes complete sense. You know, we all can't be the same weight. It depends right. on size. So, Dr. Haynes, you have a patient in the office with back pain. You know, how do you see BMI correlating with back pain? You know, one thing that I think is really important is that weight in and of itself usually doesn't cause back pain. There are multiple factors, be it genetics, the life you live, small injuries that build up over time that can relate, uh, correlate to back pain. But there's no doubt about it. The more weight your back feels, the more back pain you have. You know, simply put, every four pounds that you carry, or every one pound, rather, you carry your low back feels four times that weight. So one pound in your chest equals four pounds of weight in the low back. That really, really adds up with time. So when we look at our patients, in general, the average patient that comes and sees us is above the normal range of BMI above that 25. Yeah, that's that that is common. And then and then we get to, you know, Dr. Peicher talked about all these ranges. You know, is there um, a BMI where where you say to someone, you know, I just I can't help you until you you lose weight. <laughs> You know, it's it's very subjective. I, I think there are times that people have challenges and really such such pain and such uh, spinal issues that all the weight loss in the world isn't going to correct their problem. With that being said, a lot depends on the part of their body. So if someone has a bad problem in their neck with extra weight, it's easier and more safely we're able to address that problem surgically than if it's the low back. There are many times where it's one of the many factors where that can be modified through weight loss if someone's got a lot of low back pain where they don't end up actually needing surgery. So there's no hard and fast rule and no hard and fast number, but it's one of the many factors that we absolutely want to modify and improve. Yeah, and I guess people do carry their weight differently. You know, there's the different shapes, the pear shapes and things. So depending on what area you're accessing at the time of surgery depends on where you carry the weight. Well, let's talk about um, 
nutrition. Dr. Dr. Peicher, what are some examples of successful ways people can lose weight, maybe part of this COVID-19, sure. extra 19 pounds through nutrition? So I um, frequently talk about this with my patients because um, before you get to the point of bariatric surgery, you have to do a lot of changes in your diet and exercise. So some basic things that all of us can be more cognizant of are actually looking at food labels. So pay attention more to what you're putting in your body as far as total calories, how much fat. Um, another very helpful thing, which sounds silly to people, but keep a log of what you're eating. Um, if you keep a log of what you're eating, you have a better idea of what you can improve on. So write it down. There's tons of food log apps or online. I find that very helpful for people. Um, another thing is what we call mindful eating. So a lot of America eats when they're not hungry. They eat when they're stressed or when they're bored or when they're sad. So try to pay attention to when you actually feel hunger and eat at those times. As far as like what you should actually be eating, um, before and after surgery, we try to tell people to focus on lean sources of protein as the mainstay of your diet. So for animal products, that's like chicken, um, lean beef, pork, fish, for people that don't eat animal products, beans, lentils, um, well, eggs are sort of an animal product, but tofu, lean protein. That should be the main part of every meal. So start with your protein. Usually you'll get full from that, and then you'll have less of the extra carbohydrates, fruits, and, and other things that are higher fat and higher calorie items. Gosh, what great advice. I love the idea of keeping a diary. You know, we talk about that a lot with, with migraine patients and what are you yeah. eating, but, but, but I, who would ever think to just write down and, yeah. and or calculate on your app what you're eating, and I bet it's eye-opening. It is. It is. And I'm, I'm constantly you. humbled when I look at what I actually eat. So. I know. <laughs> right, right. I know, but they do have apps on your phone that make it so easy now. So like whenever you're out, you know, they, they connect a lot to the common fast food places and Starbucks and whatnot. You really can very easily just plug this stuff in. Um, and when patients start doing it before surgery, they're usually amazed at how much they're actually eating or the content of what they're eating as far as calories and fat. Right. Wow. Well, Dr. Haynes, that's the nutrition side. Uh, let's talk about the exercise side. You know, there's a large exercise component to losing weight. What are your recommendations for your patients with back pain? You know, what's kind of interesting is that Dr. Peicher and my jobs and why we love to work together is because we're very analogous in what we do. You know, so often what I do is I, I'm, I like to be myself as the captain of someone's back and that most of the time involves modifying their non-operative treatments and adjusting diet and weight loss. And Dr. Peicher really compliments that because she's also, of course, she's a surgeon like me, but she captains a lot of the non-surgical dietary treatments and things along those lines. So by working together, we're so often able to achieve high levels of success and get people back to the lives they love without ever needing surgery. Certainly to your question, exercise is a major part of that. So the stronger and more flexible our cores are, our, our abdominal and our low back muscles, the better they're suited to tolerate the daily activities, the less pain we're going to have. Now, what goes along with that, just like we're talking about, the less weight our core carries and the less weight our chest has, the easier of a load our core has to manage the rigors of the day-to-day -day activities. Do you find that patients with higher BMIs um, in your office, you know, they're trying the diets and the exercise, but they just end up needing surgery more than others. And either it's because they're failing the non-operative treatments or the obesity just adds to, to the degeneration faster than someone who's got a normal BMI. You know, anytime someone sees me, I like to think of where it's almost we're playing this game of tug of war, where on one side, we've got all these factors that are pushing us down the surgical path. And on the other side, we have all these factors that are saying, hey, we can get you back to life without needing surgery. Now we try to stack the deck in favor of the non-surgical side, but you're absolutely correct. Weight is one of those factors that simply makes it harder for us to get patients better without surgery. Now, of course, we prefer to avoid surgery if possible, but without a doubt, there are times that no matter what the weight, the right thing to do is to do surgery. Yeah. And we know that as the weight goes on, there are a lot of medical problems that um, patients become more at increased risk for. Dr. Peicher, um, as people climb that BMI chart, what can happen medically? Yeah, so um, obesity affects 
every single organ system of the body. So from head to toe, if you named an organ system, I could name a problem that had an increased risk if you are obese or morbidly obese. The most common problems with obesity are high blood pressure, sleep apnea, type 2 diabetes, um, osteoarthritis we see very commonly. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that obesity also increases your risk of certain types of cancers specifically uterine cancer, breast cancer, colorectal cancer. Um, so long-standing untreated obesity um, has big risks for a lot of um, organ systems throughout the body. And that's tough. You know, I mean, as you mentioned, those risks, you know, it makes me kind of cringe because I think of someone who needs a spine surgery. You know, Dr. Haynes has said, here's what we're going to do. And then all of those medical right. problems just make the surgery so Correct. much more risky. Dr. Haynes, how do you counsel these patients and what they can expect after surgery? The reality is when surgery is the right choice for someone's spine, we definitely want to get their weight in ideal level. And the reason for that is it's well documented. The more weight someone has, especially in that focal region that you were uh, talking about, Lindsay, the more risks there are with surgery in and of itself. You know, one of the big ones, we worry about infection. And the more soft tissue that needs to be gently swept to the side, it's a more of an opportunity for bacteria to sneak in. So the more weight someone carries, especially in their waist, the higher risk of infection. It's not just that, though. You know, the more weight you have, the harder it is to get up and walk all those laps that we want you doing in the hospital and once you get home. So the more weight you have, the more blood clots, the higher chance of pneumonias, urinary tract infections, and all those things we really, really try to stay away from. And if you've got a patient who they just can't lose the weight, they need a spine surgery, um, but you know they, they really need to lose the weight first. And Dr. Pesher, you're at the forefront of all the new gadgets that we have in the operating room for bariatric surgery. Can you walk us through you know, what's available with robotics, minimally invasive options? Yeah. Absolutely. So first of all, let's talk about just briefly touch on who's a candidate for bariatric surgery. So people know when it's appropriate to send patients. So I'm happy to see any patients, but insurance in this country covers bariatric surgery for patients that have a body mass index of 35 or above with a medical problem that is associated with obesity. So high blood pressure, diabetes, sleep apnea, like we talked about, along with a host of others, or body mass index of 40 or above without a, um, without a medical problem. Um, the two options for weight loss surgery that have the best long-term data as far as keeping the weight off at 10 and 15 years are something called the sleeve gastrectomy and the gastric bypass, which has been around for over 50 years now. Um, I do all of these. Yeah. Were you going to say something? <laughs> wow. That's a long time. It is. I know. 1967, a very long time. Um, we've changed the way we do it a little. It used to be done through huge open incisions like this and people stay in the hospital for days and days. Um, and now we do the minimally invasively. So I um, do all the bariatric cases minimally invasively with the Da Vinci robot, um, which is a type of minimally invasive technology um, that um, allows us to, um, a lot of benefits, especially for the bariatric patients. Patients um, leave the hospital with four or five eight millimeter incisions, so super tiny little incisions. Um, patients either go home the same day of surgery or the next morning, which is incredible, and they go home with Tylenol. They literally tell me it feels like you did too many sit-ups, which I do it every single day and I'm still amazed by, but the technology that we have now with the Da Vinci robot is incredible. That is incredible. I mean, to think of the extent of surgery that it really is, and then, you know, how it looks so small from the outside, and then the recovery be, be, you know, fairly doable. Correct. You know, well, in terms of the recovery, you know, let's say Dr. Haynes needs to do a spine surgery, but really needs to have the patient lose weight. So he sends them to you. And the patient signs up for a bariatric surgery, you know, kind of lead us through the timeline of when that patient is recovered yeah. and ready to show up with Dr. Haynes' office, you know, with their clearance yeah. letter for you saying you're ready for your spine surgery. What's the next one? Really good question, Lindsay. So um, one of the most frustrating things that I find um, in my office is when patients get referred very late um, and they want to have surgery for their spine right away. Um, the, 
pre-op process for bariatric surgery, which includes nutrition visits, so they are prepared to make the changes they need to make after to be successful, um, mental health evaluation, cardiology clearance, lab. That process takes somewhere between two and six months in the state of Virginia, um, based on insurance requirements. Um, so it's two to six months from their initial visit with me that they can have an operation. Um, and then once they have the operation, generally people go back to work in about a week. Um, and as far as losing the weight, they usually lose about a pound a day for the first three weeks. So within three weeks, they've lost about 20 to 25 pounds. Um, and then it just varies based on how active they are and whatnot. But generally about three months after surgery, they are, they've lost enough weight that they um, have made the, made it safer for them to have spine surgery. So I usually send them back at two months so that they can then start the process to get ready for their spine surgery. Three months. That's actually very reasonable. I was thinking it was like a year. <laughs> and of course, it depends how much weight they have to lose, right? I mean, if they have to lose 150 pounds, it's going to be longer. Um, but in general, by the three month period, they've lost, you know, 60 to 80 pounds. And that's enough for them to then safely proceed with spine surgery. Wow. Dr. Haynes, can you think of a, a patient, a mutual patient where you've kind of gone through the scenario and yeah. give us a little example? Yeah, you know, we're, that's, that I'm thinking of one person specifically who, someone who uh, unfortunately needed a neck surgery and she's doing very well and recovering from that, but she's got a back problem and going to the challenge of where our bodies carry the weight, it makes it much harder to address the low back and the neck when someone has a few extra pounds. Now, fortunately, you know, I don't want to let Dr. Peicher steal all the, the glory from the <laughs> robotic techniques and advanced uh, procedures we have. But, you know, fortunately in spine, we've got a spinal robot, we've got spinal endoscopes, and ultimately a whole lot of really cool technology that for patients means small incisions, yeah. less yeah. muscle disruption, and lower infection rates. Now, despite all that really amazing technology, it's been a game changer of how patients recover. The reality is this is a wonderful lady who could stand to use, lose a couple pounds in her waist. Once Dr. Peicher gets her all teed up and ready to go, she absolutely is going to do great from her back. But, you know, this collaboration between the two of us, I really think is fantastic for not only getting patients improved and getting them back to their lives without surgery, but in the circumstances where surgery is needed, it's really been a game changer. Gosh, you know, I think this is such great news, you know, especially highlighting World Obesity Day, you know, that we really do have options. And so if anyone is out there watching and... You, know, you think you're ready for a consultation for a weight loss surgery, or you gain that COVID-19, you're having back pain and you need Dr. Haynes, you know, just please follow the links for their information. You know, what great um, information we got today. And they'll obviously provide more focused information for each person uh, in the office setting. And if there are any comments, you can leave those in the chat. But thanks for everyone for viewing. And thank you, Dr. Kaiser and Dr. Haynes. Thank you for having us. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye